I'm hoping that you've seen these, right? They look beautiful. We often wear them during cultural ceremonies, but do beads have a spiritual significance? With us this morning to unpack all of that is Goko Kanyagute. Togoza Goko. This morning, Goko, we have to talk about this very interesting. It's a fashion statement in many parts of the world, but its origin comes from Africa. Most people know that who have followed their history, right? But in particular, in the spiritual realm, there is a specific reason why beads are worn. Please talk us through where that starts and how it then becomes like even the different colors have different meanings. Okay, so perhaps if we could go into the beads which we know now in modernity, mm. where it comes from. It comes from the time where before the white man and the colonizer came when our African people actually used to travel abroad and go to the east and used to exchange with Asia. Mm. You know, in kingdoms such as Mapungubwe, where 900 years ago they were already exchanging with people from the east where they would barter with them with sort of precious metals from here wow. in exchange for the beads to adorn themselves. So the beads were first introduced to us here in Africa through our kings and all of what we would say are our affluent or influential people. Okay. So when it then trickles down into the spiritual part of it, of course most people who receive a spiritual calling you receive a calling from somebody who, when they passed on, the sole purpose or sole intent was one that impacted on a lot of people. So often people initiate in great kings, great leaders, great mm. warriors, people who were affluent or influential in their society. And so you'll find that those beads, when they are shown to you and they revealed firstly, are to connect you to those great leaders or those great figures of Africa who were captains of industry, or Tingo Sitemanzawe, if we can put it like that. Yes, yes. I remember in our last conversation, you were saying how our ancestors are in our DNA. Do the beads then come to people in, in the form of dreams? If we to us, uh, how would you know I need to go for red, or it needs to be multicolored, etc.? So if you're a Twasa, they are your dreams are an ancestral communication channel, and that is a personal ancestral communication channel for you. Right. So you will receive certain beads which are shown to you, which are important in terms of perhaps balancing certain energies. For example, I wear the black and white beads here on my wrist. What That's, does that represent? For me, what it represents is uh, it's the polarity, it's the understanding of, you know, the light and dark. Because in African spirituality, we do not separate light from dark. We understand that it's about being whole as a person, embracing all parts of yourself, both light and dark, in order to be able to self-actualize and live out your true soul intent and soul purpose. Right. Interesting history there, Gogo, and thanks for sharing it. I imagine you've got questions for Gogo yourself. You can uh, let us know via our WhatsApp. Our WhatsApp line is 72 411 Six five two eight. Let's talk about the ones that we've got here on display, Gogo. What does each of these, uh, you know, stand for, represent? So, um, I, the red is very prominent because a lot of people are very much interested in red. Right. But, you know, in the same as when we spoke about Amabai, yeah. the color coding of it is also very much similar to what the red would signify, the blood, you know, a connection to our blood ancestors. Okay. The red also could mean in your gift as somebody who has the gift of healing that you are being gifted with working with umuti or bovu or red plant-based medicine oh. because there are three different colors of plant medicine. Mm. There is black muti, there is red muti, and there is white muti. Okay. So the red beads could also then be your accessor to working with umuti or bovu specifically as a healer. The red could also be a connector to Nguni ancestry specifically because they were cat cattle herders, you know, so the whole thing of sacrifice and blood is very big in the Nguni space. Okay. And the Nguni people were also warrior people as well and conquerors. So blood to them and war is something that also could be represented by those beads. So they do not have a singular connotation, but they have different codes with which are aligned within the context of who you are. I get you, I get you. Uh, the yellows and the greens that I'm seeing over here with, the bit, uh, with, uh, with some blue as well. Okay, so this one is very interesting. Let me actually grab it. So what we'll see here, it looks like a giant bead. This yeah. is Andoro. 
Okay. So as I spoke about earlier on, when our ancestors used to exchange and, you know, barter with people in the East, yeah. Ndoro was used partly as currency. Okay. As you would have seen, um, a lot of people, Sangomas also use cowrie shells. So the Ndoro and the cowrie shell was what we used to exchange with those people. When we go then into the beading, the different colors, the yellow would represent, you know, the sun energy. When we say Isangoma, person of the sun, mm. it would also then the sun representing, you know, a divine masculine. It would be around masculine-esque energies. Okay. The orange would then go into, you know, things such as when things ripen, they often turn this color, turn orange. So it has to do, you know, with fertility. It has to do with abundance. It has to do with all of those kinds of codes. And in that context, Gogo, sorry to cut in, is that like universal? So even if you went to um, other places that you mentioned around Africa, orange represents that? Or so, does it differ within the regions? You know, with, in, with indigenous knowledge, it is not um, a binary of either or, okay. right or wrong. It is both and. So right. I could understand it to be like this and you understand it to be another way. Right. It doesn't mean I am wrong or you are right. It means we are both right. So long as when we unpack the alchemy behind the understanding of it, there is something that resonates within the natural world and within the context of the person. I get you. So it isn't universal at all. Uh, you're still explaining the other colors. There's blue that I'm seeing, a bit of purple as well, and a clear one. What is yes. the clear one? So the clear one is a representation of, of the water. Yeah. When water is clear. So it connects with, you know, the gifts of healing through water. So people who have the gift of prophecy will often use these clear beads. Ah. People who also walk with the deity or in Londo, which will be called in Zunza, yes. would also then wear these clear beads because they carry that sort of spirit. When we go into black, as I've spoken around, you know, the same with red, could be a gifting of working in Mite Minyama. Okay. And Mite Minyama is around, you know, working with darkness, people who are bewitched and what, what. Mm. That Ilos Lako when is gifting you to become his goddess at Lula Batagazi. Mm. Or that one that actually brings healing or defends against, you know, witchcraft and um, malevolent acts and people and beings. Right. When we go into the blue, the blue represents, um, you know, the sky is blue. Mm. So it would represent um, natural psychic gifts. It would represent also gifts of umoya, such as which can be um, expressed as being psychic, can be expressed as being prophecy or is tunya, the church, the church way. But also blue also represents the color of the ocean. So it could be a connected to the fact that you have an oceanic spirit or an oceanic connecting connection in your ancestry that your people came from a place which was close to the ocean like Amazulu or Amakosa mm. here in South Africa. I get you, Gogo. If our morning show viewers this morning want to get in touch with you, where can they find you? So I am available on social media as Gogo underscore Kanyagu Dem. Right. Um, I also have a YouTube channel, which is Gogo Kanyagu Dem Abuza. And if they want to contact me, they can WhatsApp me. Don't call, send a text to 081. 538-3097. Awesome stuff. Thank you for making the time. That was Goko Kanyagute uh, talking to us about Ama Beads. This morning here on the show, we're taking a quick ad break. There's still lots more. Do stay with us.